Hickok 45 here. I mean, man with no name here. Let's shoot something. Uh, uh, whoa, let's smoke a pot. Or two. <laughs> nice. Yeehaw! That should be it. Yes, I don't have a name today because I have a snake on my pistol. Yes, the Cimarron Man With No Name Conversion. I think it's officially called, and I'm not sure what I'm officially called. Let's take it up here and take a look at it and uh, let you know what I have. Talk about it a little bit. You want to? Make sure the snake doesn't bite me. Pretty snake, huh? Ooh, silver inlaid. Yeah, our buddy. This is a 38 caliber revolver. And it is the Cimarron Man With No Name uh, conversion or pistol, whatever you might want to call it. And for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I guess there's a little bit of explaining to do. You might need to do a little further research yourself. So I have a cowboy hat. Clint Eastwood carried this revolver, among others, and a lot of the spaghetti westerns he made, right? And uh, we really didn't have a name. Man with no name. Blondie or whatever. And uh, that was a distinctive grip. And uh, it's, it's kind of cool. I thought you know, we did the uh, wider uh, bunt line thing and all that replica. And I thought, let's, let's get one of these. We can find one. And we did. All right. Yeah, it's not an old gun. It's kind of a replica of a firearm that was used fairly long time ago in the movies in the 60s, 1960s, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about that, the history of it, and what it is, all right? Because, as I said in my recent uh, Sunday uh, shoot around, there's, uh, there's firearms history, then there's also movie history involving firearms, right? And uh, this kind of touches in both, both areas there, all right? So, but it is a 38 Special, fires 38 Special and 38 Colt. I've got a little 38 Colt I found in the barn, and it chambers that as well, okay? So that's what it's chambered for, 38 Special. And why would that be? I don't know. And why do you have this other firearm out here? I have no idea. Yes, I do. This is the uh, this is a Colt 1851, uh, you know, Navy Colt, all right? Percussion, revolver. And this is pretty much the revolver they're supposed to be using in the spaghetti western in, in a lot of them. I think I've seen them carry some 45s and other things. But you'll see in Good, Bad, and the Ugly, maybe some of the others, the dollar movies, Fistful of Dollars or whatever, you'll see a lot of, uh, of the Navy Colt, the 51 Navy Colt. And we have videos on these, of course. They're a percussion revolver, 36 caliber. And you load them, you know, through the ram rod there, the ramming device there, and all that, push the ball in, and you've seen us do that, <laughs> and others, I'm sure. So that's really what they're carrying, and they actually are carrying these revolvers in the movie. But if you'll notice, when they need to shoot, it's in a scene where they're going to be firing the pistol, they're going to pull it out and fire it, you'll probably see one that looks like more like this because this one takes cartridges. See, big difference there. For folks who are really new to firearms, this is kind of like a standard single action, isn't it? You open up the loading gate and you put the bullet in there, right? Okay. Whereas with this one, you can't do that. You load it from the front, it's an actual percussion revolver, and then, then you put the caps over the nipple and you fire it. You're creating your own cartridge more or less, right? Okay. So since they're not firing it, when they're not firing it, they're carrying the uh, authentic, generally the 51 Navy Colts or, or another one, maybe an 1860 Army, I don't know. I'm not an expert in those movies. I have seen them, or most of all of them, and some of them not for a long time. But uh, when they're gonna fire, as I understand, uh, you really, it's, you know, it's better to use the Hollywood blanks, right? And uh, with black powder blanks, creates a little bit of an issue, <laughs> getting them in that thing. And, you know, whatever, you could fire a blank, you could load up some powder, put a cap on it, you could stick a wad in there and some things, and, you know, you get it to fire a blank round, but you've got a wad and stuff coming out the end of the barrel, and, and you know, those things can actually do some damage to somebody, put an eye out, or hurt them even worse. Whereas the uh, standard Hollywood blanks, that are, I guess, pretty much in production, have been for a long time, where they just close up the end of the brass 
put uh, whatever charge in there and the, the brass is kind of crimped and holds it in there and I don't think you have anything other than the burnt powder coming out and those can be dangerous too you know blanks can be and we know some stories about those don't we but anyway it's just much more convenient if they can have a firearm even in the movies that will take a cartridge okay a blank they can just load them up and for the scene and they're ready to go and you know you're really not going to notice much difference already now these look a little different we've got a brass frame but if this is in the holster and i'm clint eastwood they'll say they've got the same you know frame this has silver coating on it uh chrome nickel whatever I say this gun versus you know this one you're not really going to notice same firearm right when i pull it out and I cock it and shoot, you're just, unless you're really watching close, and most of those movies are low def anyway. So that's kind of the, how that worked. You know, when it's gonna be a shooting scene, they would usually have one of these converted to use cartridges. And if you really watch movies, uh, as an aside, I've noticed watching old Western series and movies sometimes. Also, you'll notice they have rubber versions of most of the firearms used in, in not just Westerns, but I've noticed it in Westerns with rifles and handguns uh, because you can rewind. You go know, back when they made a lot of these things, nobody could just rewind from the theater. But now we can rewind and look at it over and over if we want to. And if you rewind, you'll say, wait a minute, that gun didn't look right. And I've done that several times. And the gun will be kind of dark black. And it looks like this, this really like a toy gun or something. It is. It's a rubber version. Because maybe in that scene, you know, the cowboy or bad guy, they're going to, Hey, what are you doing? They're going to take a gun and smack him upside the head with it real quick, you know. And it's not even a real gun. It's made of rubber, imagine that. And uh, But now we can kind of go back and take a look, can't we? Whereas 40, 50 years ago, you couldn't do that. So, same with these movies, the Spaghetti Westerns. You know, they could kind of fake it there, and you, know, you would not have caught it unless you caught it at the time, right? So, this is, again, this is offered by... Uh, you know, Cimarron, the replica of, of these of the no-name no gun to look like the one that Clinch would carry and, and others, but I think his was the only one with the snake on the, the handle, the grip. And it runs for about 700 bucks, probably is what you're going to pay for it. It fires 38 Special or 38 Colt, and it loads like a kind of a single action, typical half cock. Put it on half cock. And load up five or six i load five for safety and you shoot it and then to eject the cases though there's not a uh, ejector rod on the side you notice that okay now we're getting into the crux of the matter the reason this looks so much and so similar to the 1851 navy colt is because there is no ejector housing and that ejector rod on the side of the barrel to push the cases out why wouldn't they do that for the movies? You know, well, that would show up like a sore thumb. They said, wait a minute, oh, God, you're supposed to have an 1851 Navy and you've got like an 1873 Colt single action ejector rod on the side of that thing? Not that the movies seem to care too much about being authentic sometimes, right? Because we, oh boy, we catch them all the time. But this way, they just really look alike. I mean, you got to imagine this be, this one being brass, okay? And you, at a glance, you're just not going to notice the difference. You've got the, uh, the loading uh, plunger and stuff down here and everything, see? So for Hollywood purposes, this worked best. You know, being able to unload it, you, you know, quickly is not an issue, okay? You've got Hollywood cut, you know, they can, they can handle that without any trouble. Now, for you or me, uh, what we do to unload this one is, not like what you saw me do. The uh, ramrod and everything is modified. See, this two pieces that comes out, and you use that, or you could use a brass rod or a dowel rod made of wood, which would be better for the gun, right? If you're gonna shoot it a lot, maybe. And you just push the cases out. You got this to push them out, all right? So you got it right there with the gun, though, all right? So that's what that's about. So to have this gun and go out and shoot with it, you got this right there with you, and you know, works out okay. Now, I don't know exactly how close this this is to the actual firearm that they made for the movie. Okay, the spaghetti westerns, you know, good, bad, and the ugly, whatever. Uh, if it was done exactly like this, I, I don't. I doubt that they even had the two-piece rammer on that one. I'm not sure. Maybe you know, uh, but this is a replica of that, and that's what it's supposed to be. It looks like an 1851 Navy Colt, and it, and it shoots 38 Special. So cool. 
And I tell you, I always liked these. Uh, when I was uh, younger, much younger, I would see uh, one of these guns in a movie, whether it was this one or an 1860, whatever, the percussion revolvers with this uh, underneath. I always thought they were so cool. I just really did. I wasn't even sure what they were and what that all that was, but I just really thought they were extra cool. And it's kind of what you get with this, best of both worlds. You get a cartridge gun that you can shoot modern powder in. It's what I'm shooting. And, uh, and you've got that look. So that, that's kind of neat, okay? Even though it's kind of fake. I'll show you. It's really fake. First of all, it's two pieces. Also, I discovered, uh, which is probably by intent, you know, it, it doesn't go into the hole. See, down it doesn't line up. So you couldn't push a ball in there if you wanted to, like you can on that one. Okay. And that's probably best because it's really just for looks. That's all. Okay. And you got to, if, if you end up with this one, just remember when you put this ram rammer back in there, it goes one way and get the dovetail the right way and it'll stay up just like that. Okay. Now, again, uh, these guns were used in, you know, up, well, 1851 up through the Civil War and everything. And afterwards, uh, people loved the 1851 Navy Colt and a lot of the other percussion guns. And after the Civil War, there were conversions made by Richards and Mason and others. And they actually did take these firearms and convert them to use cartridges. Okay, and that involved like cutting off the back of the cylinder and adding the ejector rod on the side it welded on there, whatever, silver soldered, I don't know. So it actually had a, an ejector on the side, okay? And it, they put a loading gate on them and I've seen a couple, they did look a little bit like this in terms of the loading gate, I believe. And so we have a loading gate and it cut this out and, uh, and they became a cartridge gun, okay? And they were very, very popular because there were so many of these. So you could do a conversion and it would be cheaper than buying a, a new gun or even an 1873 single action when they came out. You'd get one of these for less money and it would work. It would fire the cartridges. Now, that's not what Hollywood did though. Okay, that's just, again, that's not what Hollywood did. That was not their intention. Uh, in Italy, back in the in 1960s, when they were making the Spaghetti Westerns, they, they were not interested in the Richard Mason, you know, conversions and those sorts of things. They were not trying to be historically correct on the conversion, okay? And that's why they did this the way they did. They wanted it to look like this. Looks were important, okay? <laughs> so this is basically a uh, long way around the barn to explain it, but basically what is this thing? It's a movie prop, okay? It's a movie prop. Yeah, it's a cartridge gun. They wanted it to look like the 1851 Navy Colt. Okay, it's pretty much what you have here. Let's shoot again. Can I do that? Put some more ammo in it and shoot it. And it's a fun little shooter. It, it's, it's right on in terms of uh, the sights, seems to me. And, uh, you know, I've had it a week or two and uh, shot it two or three times in the Sunday shoot around and just messing with it. It's 38 special and it's a heavy gun. So uh, that tells you not a lot of recoil. I believe the sights are right on. Let me shoot a couple of things and see. Now let's try a two liter down there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, sights are on. I might miss. There's another one. Is that all? Yeah. So it shoots right on. No recoil, if you can tell. It's just not moving much at all, probably. And uh, it's a little more awkward to use because of the uh, ejector rod and all that kind of thing. Now, if I was going to bring it out here and shoot it a lot, and I should have done that today, in fact, I would just have a uh, something else to push those out, like a back end of a, like a, a, a what do they call it? There's a company that makes giant Q-tips, you know, to clean guns with. I've got a bunch of those in the, in, the, in the barn there. I just don't have them out here with me. I would use the back end of one of those. Because it doesn't take much to push out the 38 Special. You know, they don't really stick. They're not high pressure or anything. Get those out of there. So if you're a fan of the old Clint Eastwood movies, the uh, Spaghetti Westerns, they are filmed over in Italy and uh, Spain. And, and, you know, they've been, they run them so much. Almost anybody that likes Clint Eastwood and, you know, Westerns has seen those things. Probably all of them. Maybe several times. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this, this might just be right up your alley. It, it's kind of cool that somebody's doing it. And another little 
tidbit I picked up when I was reading about this. The uh, I hadn't thought about it, but it seems that during those days when they were making those westerns and and the gunmakers in Italy were creating these pieces for the movies, that that really was kind of maybe the genesis for the vast replica industry over there. You know, today, think about it. How many historical replicas are being made in, in Italy? I mean, it's the hot spot on the planet for that, isn't it? You know, these kinds of things, rifles and just everything, and, you know, Henry rifles, you name it. So it's really cool that they're being made, isn't it? And so we, maybe we owe a debt of gratitude to those spaghetti westerns to help get that started. Because I remember in the 70s, when I started seeing some of those in gun shops, when I first got into firearms, I remember that. And uh, just, and I was so impressed to see like an 1866 Winchester and, uh, and some of these kinds of things. I'm like, wow, who makes that? Is that, a, you know, cause it, is that a Colt in that good a shape? A replica. Uh, from Italy, and so uh, it's, it's pretty neat. And I don't know what else I need, like I gotta shoot it one more time at least, but uh, probably I think we know the liar too to tell you about it. Uh, so yeah, you know, for the movies, it's a movie prop. You know, it, it's not meant to be a historically correct uh, conversion of an 1851 Navy. Not at all, not at all. Uh, you know, there were, there were those, you see those at gun shows. Like I say, the Richards Mason, I think is one of the most common. And, uh, you know, they had to cut it up and, you know, and, and it was for practical use so that you could stick in a holster and use it. And then you'd be able to eject the cartridges and, and everything. With, uh, with this one, uh, that didn't matter too much because it was just for the movies, okay? And it was supposed to look like that one. So, kind of interesting how they do that in the filming where, you know, uh, you may see this gun in a holster and maybe even pulled out, maybe pulled on somebody or whatever if they're not going to fire it you know, they use the, the real thing. And then uh, when there's a shooting scene, you just replace it. And of course, I'm sure they had the, the grips on both of them, right? So, the man with no name, the snake gun. Uh, if you've seen those movies, that grip should look familiar to you in the, the firearm as well. And there's something about all the movies that you watch, uh, you know, sometimes you're not sure what you're seeing. You're thinking it's a, wow, it's a Civil War movie, isn't it, or something, and somebody's sticking cartridges in a gun or whatever well they don't get it right lots of times and then also you've got the the uh the magnet uh working that they really need to, to use blanks and they need to they need for the movie to work and for it to be safe and to be able to fire the guns and all that sort of thing the best way they can and you know, probably often that is with cartridges whether it's period correct you know, or not so uh, that's the thing they've got to deal with in you know, doing the movies. And then aside from the fact that sometimes they obviously have either no consultants who know anything about firearms or, or they just don't care, you know, and they, they just get it wrong so, so often. But uh, anyway, that's, that's the replica of the firearm that uh, Clint Eastwood carried. And uh, he had no name, uh, really, <laughs> did he, Blondie? <laughs> and, and I have to confess too, I was, as much as I love westerns and firearms and these guns, I was, I have never been a fan of those spaghetti westerns. I'm not sure what it is about them that they just, uh, they're just a little extra hokey to me and really always have been. I mean, they, they would, they've always been good for putting me to sleep. They, they really are. I don't know what it is back since the early 70s when I started seeing them. I remember going to the drive-in when I was in college Three or four of us guys piled in. They were having a, uh, in Clarksville, Tennessee, they were having a uh, Spaghetti Western. They were showing off three or four of those. Clint Eastwood Spaghetti, spaghetti Western, you know, from whatever, from nine o'clock until two in the morning or something. And I think I went to sleep. I mean, I, I don't know what it is about them. They're okay, I can watch a little bit, but uh, I, just, I, I just have never gotten into them as much as maybe some of you all have. All right, now, I apologize for that. <laughs> Of course, we've got to shoot a cowboy with this thing, right? Let's put one on the cowboy. All right, we've got to put, try to put one on the gong. Okay. Uh, probably have to hold up a little bit. Oh, good. Let's put one more on the cowboy before we go home. 
boom. And that should be it. And to prove it has stopped functioning, I'll shoot the stop sign. Yeah, weak handed. So, yeah, the uh, Cimarron, man with no name, conversion, replica of Clint Eastwood's spaghetti western firearm. That's what this is. And if you have one, or you're a big fan of those movies, uh, you know, anything you want to add, uh, you know, please do. I'm not an expert on the movies, but uh, I, I do uh, I do find Clint Eastwood, uh, just, he's always been one of my favorite actors, really, from back in the Rawhide days, you know, the series Rawhide. I, 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 I identified him right there. I have a great eye for a successful actor. <laughs> I really, he was a favorite in that series. Who knew he might go on and be fairly successful, right, with some other movies. And so he carried one of these things that looked a lot like this, and uh, and that's why it's called what it's called. And it has got the snake on the grip. So, uh, you know, this uh, goes back to Bud's and you know, <laughs> for E. Gunner, and I, I mentioned that several times. These are all empty I've got in here, but uh, uh, you know, I always put a certificate in there and that target you're looking at back there. And, that sort of thing, verifying the serial number, but uh, that's, uh, and 10% of that goes, comes back to the uh, Tennessee, uh, Middle Tennessee uh, Second Harvest Feed Bank, so that's how that, that works. I explain that every now and then. And 30 Special, if you like a firearm that, that is historical, historic, looks historical, and fires a very manageable cartridge that's very common, might be something you're interested in, I don't know. Anyway, sure is a lot easier to load than that percussion revolver over there. I'll vouch for that. So glad you came out this evening to see this old snake gun. Life is good. Uh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips, so go check them out. Also, Ballastol, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45, and also I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.